Not a whole lot exciting going on in the world of X-Men when it comes to the comic books, but we did get some interesting information about Axe Judgment Day, Avengers, X-Men, and Eternals battling it out. We also have word on a new artist for the X-Men. It's not really the flagship title. It's just the X-Men title, I guess. Immortal X-Men and X-Men Red are the flagship, and X-Men is the number three title, but Pepe Luraz is gone. We're getting a new artist here, here to talk with me about that. Is Doc. How you doing, Doc? I'm doing fine, man. Perfect. Now let's talk about Judgment Day. Axe Judgment Day, the big crossover event. We got X-Men, we got Avengers, we got Eternals. One of these things doesn't belong, but Kieran Gillen is the Eternals writer, and he's an X-Men writer, so he's decided to somehow bring in the Avengers. Are you excited about this before we get into the information that Kieran Gillen gave out this week? Um, No, and I believe you need. I need to... Cl- uh correct you he was the externals writer because or the eternals writer because the fucking series is over so is it I yeah we're tying this. we're tying in a <laughs> series that doesn't exist anymore because they had a movie that f- flopped majorly it flopped big time i'm not excited for this event either i think it's pretty superfluous but this is what kieran gillen the big time writer from Marvel Comics had to say about it. One reason why this crossover is really interesting is the X-Men are new immortals. While the Eternals are very old ones, the Eternals are a really awful portrait of how Krakoa could end up. Magneto says something in the first issue like, did you think the powers that be would give up eternity without a fight? I don't believe he was talking about the Eternals there, and it feels like Kieran Gillen is trying to, uh, you know, fit a square peg into a round hole. Yeah, they're they're trying to set up something big, but they're doing it in a way that I I don't think is going to really resonate with a lot of people. You know, you're trying; they're still trying to come at it under under the assumption that a lot of people are going to be brought into this because they give a shit about the Eternals because they had twelve issues to make the Eternals interesting and with a huge launch and a big movie and then it flopped majorly he's trying to make it seem like it's important but he's done a lot of really stupid stuff even in the eternals you know i i I tried to read the comic book it was too boring not surprising you know i do like kieran gillen's darth vader work there's got some indie stuff i like but a lot of times i just don't like the way that he tells the story i think they're they're way too slow and he likes to throw a bunch of garbage in there speaking of which Part of the division causing Axe Judgment Day is due to the Eternals' recent election, wherein Thanos briefly served as the ancient group's leader. This is what Kieran Gillen had to say. I know it's a strange fantasy to imagine that, right? That democratic politics might possibly go wrong. One of my favorite bits in Eternals was that double-page spread where we showed the gerrymandering of the Eternals. My favorite thing is when we go, the Eternals would never elect Thanos. No, I've just shown you how they have. And the answer is most people didn't turn up. So the Eternals elected Thanos to to be the leader. I understand Thanos is a big character. They're not doing anything interesting with him right now, but I wish they would stop messing the character up. They spread him out so thin, and every time they use him like this, they make the character more ridiculous and less powerful. Like, that's not even an interesting storyline in my point, my in my mind. It's really not. Um, he's... He, but the idea that at any point a deviant even could because Thanos is a deviant that was his whole thing like he's a, a deviant titan that he could even get on a some sort of a ballot is absurd and and it's stupid and it's a waste of time well and it's also stupid like shoehorning dumbass like u.s politics in yeah the fucking book which is weird because Kieran Kieran Gillen's British why don't you talk about Brexit with fucking Eternals? Like, that's kind of more in your wheelhouse. But you just go to say something about Trump and the election. Like, oh, my God. So fucking over this. And, you know, you're just ruining Thanos and you're making yourself and the series less important to the Marvel Comics universe. And now we're just making Thanos, like, less important and less credible as far as a threat. And just, I don't know. And the Eternals just never got over. Even, even though they brought in Thanos, he's supposed to be a big character. No one read the Eternals because no one cared despite that. You know, at this point, could, are you really ever surprised when when a comic writer can't take their real world politics out of their comics? No, it's it's they're obsessed with it. 
well, none of these, none of these writers ever think beyond the story that they want to tell right at that very moment. They never think about the unintended consequences of the damage they're doing to those characters. That's where we used to have somebody in there that would restrain them. That's actually what Tom Brevert's job used to be when he was kind of the continuity cop. Um, he would come in and tell them, no, you can't do that. Why? Because it's going to fuck up this character and it's going to make it so that you can't use that character effectively down the line. Well, now he's all aboard the do whatever the shit you want with any character ever and fuck the consequences bandwagon. But and that's why we're at this point. That's why nobody gives a shit. I mean, honestly, come on. This is what we would call Tom Revort if he were in the military. We call him Road retired on active duty he's sitting there but he's a for all intents and purposes he has left the building and he's just waiting for his number to be called he does absolutely nothing but if you're excited about this and you're like oh my goodness i didn't read eternals that's that's not going to be a problem because kieran gillard's previous eternals is not required reading for judgment day this is what he had to say an event book comes from everything that's been built so far but it's also a place where people could jump aboard like what the hell is this new blockbuster event of the summer so the Avengers not knowing as much as the other two players is great because they're reader surrogates. Oh, great. So you get to spend half of the, the series getting recaps of how we got there from. Uh, no, you're going to get the, the X-Men are going to be explaining it to the Avengers. Yeah, yes, exactly. The, the X-Men are going to narrate it to the Avengers for half this series. Honestly, this is why you don't need to pick up any of those stupid fucking attach, like the one shots, like the Eve of Judgment, de- you know, all death those, all those, yeah, Death of the Mutants. Don't pick up any of those because all you're going to do is get narrated um, a bunch of shit about the conflict between them considering that you know there it hasn't shown up in anything yet i've read a lot of x-men comics and they have not given two shits about the eternals ever exactly um so this is coming out of fucking left field but all all it is is recapping the eternals series just just you could probably find it all in the dollar bin you don't want to go read the eternal series but my time. point is there's at least three or four like five six dollar one shots that are coming out they're gonna get you all caught up you could buy all 12 issues of eternals out of the dollar bin for cheaper yeah there's a good artist on it at least i know definitely uh, better than the artists that are going to be on this all on the you know death of the mutants and eve of judgment one shots yeah, this big, but, stupid, watered-out of it. I'm not excited for it, but I do hope people are out there are excited. We'll read the very first issue, and we'll wrap it up, but I, I'm not promising anything else, Doc. I, we did enough bad comic books for long enough. I, I need a break. I'm on a break from bad comics. I understand that, too. That's why I'm not going to read it. Well, actually, you're probably going to force me to. I am going to. Yeah, but look, I mean, considering that you know, we, we just finished up a Eternals is is just the continuation of 50 years right now of that brand failing ever since jack came back and created it and picked all his trash up off the fourth world cutting room floor and handed it to marvel we're now at like the sixth attempt they're still trying to make this fucking eternal shit work I don't know. Does it feel like there's a lot of excitement going into Axe Judgment Day? But we do have word, some X Men news that you might find interesting, Doc. Josh Quisera, he started out as the X Force artist, and he was really the only artist that stood out from the pack. Everything else kind of, they weren't, they weren't all clones of each other, but they had very similar art styles. Josh Quisera, he specifically had a different colorist on there as well that kind of, uh, you know, made, makes, makes his art just look differently. He became the artist on, the X Lives and Deaths of Wolverine. That's kind of the biggest book he's probably done at Marvel Comics so far. He's supposed to be one of their Stormbreakers, one of the most ridiculous, dumb names to uh, let people know that you're excited about an artist. Apparently, he is taking over for Pepe the Raz as the new X-Men artist. Do you think this is a good fit? I think this is the biggest downgrade in human history. I mean, th- this is like, this is literally like going from... um. I can't honestly, I cannot think of a bigger downgrade 
like for the regular artist of on a title in forever i mean no this is this is some huge downgrade i know you like joshua Cassano. i think he's perfectly fine i don't think he's a good x-men artist i think he's good on the more edgy bloody kind of uh hardcore book i don't think he's the right guy for x-men but x-men isn't the flagship title anymore that's clear now that he's taken over it is 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 it going to become a horror book now because that's the only thing that he i feel is really excels at um like body horror type stuff a anything else like for a superhero book he's fucking bad like not good at all i think uh, he's, he's perfectly fine but he has his place and i don't think like on an x-men title is right right spot <sighs> yeah i i feel like this is i feel like this is a major major downgrade um they could have found literally one of the other nine Stuart Eminem clones to stick there and at least keep some degree of of consistency with it but you know what's interesting doc does <laughs> this confirm the mark miller rumors he came out and said hey i went out and stole dc comics biggest artist don't worry i was fair i went and stole marvel comics best artist as well there was a lot of speculation that maybe he was talking about pepe Larraz. you think this means that pepe Larraz is going mark miller miller world mm, i'd say you got a better than uh you got a it's better not than, a, it's not con yeah, it doesn't it's confirm it. High up. yeah it i doesn't know confirm it but i'm telling you it's like really highly likely i would be like i'm at like 90 percent uh, I, the Raz is the artist he was talking about and for dc i, I still think it's jorge Jimenez, even though they haven't announced anything with him uh, is it um uh, you know what i'm wondering whether it's victor bogdanovich over at dc but um i don't no. think victor bogdanovich would be considered or anyone would say he's their best artist uh yeah you're probably right like even um, dan mora you know who's doing similar books i would say is, has a bigger name than victor yeah uh well it might be rb silva too at marvel well, he, but, you know whichever others well stewart was supposed to retire and then he did the the magic order again so you know the, you i, know, I just the have clothes. a feeling it's pepe the raz but i agree with you i think josh casera is an enormous downgrade on that x-men title but it kind of just tells you what they think about what jerry duggan's doing since he took over as the flagship x-men writer We've had X-Men Red come out, which was obviously Sword. Now it's got the big X name title on it, and it's dealing with the Rocco, and it feels more important than X-Men. And we've had Immortal X-Men with Kieran Gillen, which is all the mid players within the X-Men and all the politics and stuff. And it's the key central focus going into Judgment Day and stuff like that. And like X-Men is an afterthought, and now he gets kind of a, an afterthought artist. Well, I mean, you got the afterthought writer with an afterthought artist on the afterthought book because his big event was make a fucking dinner party that that i don't and blame him it was supposed to be a one issue i think jordan white's the one that took that and ruined it okay well fine he could have fought against it and been like no there's not enough material here for it but no he wanted to get his name out there so haha -ha, generic duggan you ended up but i mean look joshua casera He's a third-rate artist on a third-rate X book. So, sure. Do you have any final words about all this X-Men news we had this week, Doc? Um, seriously, X Office, write better fucking comics. That way we could talk about them. Although X Force was good this week. I'm not terribly excited for X Judgment Day, but if I gotta take a side, I gotta take a side. I am so tired of the mismanagement of the X-Men on Krakoa. I think it's been awful ever since Jonathan Hickman left. He left a little bit before he actually announced he was leaving, but it's been going downhill. I'm rooting for the Eternals. I hope they kill every single mutant on Krakoa. That's just how I'm doing.